teachers who truly believed a student would get nowhere in life. Were you correct? Where are they now? Story 1. I had a student in my freshman history class who was a junior. He kept failing every class and had to repeat them. Kid was always high, barely paid attention, hung out with other burnouts and owls, and was on track to fail again. Me and the school therapist made it our mission to turn him around. She got him candy counseling, I tutored him to get him through his classes, we both talked to the lacrosse coach and worked with him to get him on the team so that he would have structure and a better group of friends. He completely turned it around, graduated, wrote me a great thank you note that I still have, and I recently ran into him in the town I teach and he's doing great at college now. Definitely proud of him for all he did to not go down the road, all signs were pointing for him. Story two. I have never stayed at a school long enough for the kids to come back for a 10-plus years anniversary meetup, so yeah, I don't really know. The kids I do know who were having, let's say a difficult time following the curriculum, just went into trades or some sort of manual or service sector work. The ones I've occasionally run into on the street or a shop did fairly well for themselves. One was a carpenter, earning a lot more than I do. Another worked at a gym, mega buffed with three little girls in tow, now a gentle giant. One was a teller in a supermarket and so on. Just because you're not cut out for the world of academics doesn't mean you're ending up in jail or a tent under an overpass. Had a couple of former students now married with kids profusely apologizing and feeling sorry for their behavior back at school. But as someone just doing a job myself, I never took anything personally. So I'd replay something like, no worries. You've done all right for yourself. Story 3 I am kind of the opposite case. Many teachers were convinced I would be an overachiever and could do anything in academia. Unfortunately, that meant no more work needed here for them. I believed them, aimed high and failed at many occasions. Turns out just knowing a lot of stuff as a kid and being well-behaved is not all there is you need to succeed as an adult. I never learned to get through actual challenges because there weren't any in school. I struggled in college in white-collar work because I never learned to focus and problem-solve in those settings. It took me 10 years after dropping out of school to understand this and unlearn all those false expectations they had drilled into me. I am now doing much better accepting to just be a regular Joe, happy to make a contribution on a small scale. Story 4. There was a kid named Shane who went to school all 12 years with me. He was a burnout or white trash kid. He constantly got in trouble in elementary school and then got into a lot of sweets and fights when we were in high school. All that said, he was always very nice to me. I was a nerd, and in the sixth grade, I picked Shane to be my partner for a project because we had to pick someone we weren't friends with. I think it meant a lot to him to be picked by a smart kid, and we did really well on that project. I also learned a lot about him, and his stepdad was a real POS. I know he was beating Shane and his mother. There was also a time in 10th grade English when he was really being a jackass. And after class, I stopped him in the hallway and asked if he needed a hug. He looked at me like I offered him a kidney. I didn't actually think he would hug me, but he did, and I hugged back for a long time. I truly don't think anyone had ever hugged him before. The year after we graduated high school, Shane committed. I know that a lot of the people in our class thought he was mean, and the teachers were irritated with how he acted out. But that guy lived in a horror movie, and literally any basic gesture of kindness could have reminded him that his life mattered. Story 5. Two that stand out. I had a student in my third grade class. He was tiny and physically adorable and was constantly in trouble. I knew he'd have a rough life because his family never set limits nor held him accountable. I was the liar, never him. He was a true baby boy syndrome. I tried so hard to make the parents understand how they were harming him even though they loved him so much. I was so sad when he was murdered at age 14 by his two friends after the trio robbed a gas station and fought over the money stolen. Another student in a class was a girl who looked older than most kids that age. She was funny, smart, and a real joy to teach. Her period started that year, and instead of embarrassment at the mess, she was so happy because my mama said now I can have babies. She got pregnant in fourth grade, had her first child in fifth grade, and before high school, had a total of four children when she dropped out. Broke my heart. My co-worker called one day to tell me she caught her in a park with a military guy who freaked when told she was in elementary school. Story 6. I'm not a teacher myself, but this kid entered into my third grade class to the disdain of my teacher that year, who sat us down and gave us a huge talk and everything she was telling us to ignore his antics, and if he acted up not to encourage him, basically, in addition to telling us how hard she fought to keep him out of school completely and to disallow high. 
not just from entry into her class, but from enrollment into our school system entirely. My teacher had attempted to school him through third grade and onward a total of three times, and this would make the fourth. She wasn't concerned with his inability to do schoolwork or to try to learn or to be successful in doing so, but rather it was seemingly her safety and that of the other students that she seemed to be concerned about, and the fact that he was threatening it by merely being present, she had a real antipathy toward this kid. I don't remember any major happenings with him, and I don't think he ever treated me particularly poorly, which was actually unusual for classmates versus young me because I got picked on a lot as a kid. But I remember he attended special ed classes, and it seemed like he has gotten into trouble and ultimately expelled for committing some crime of a close relationship nature to another student. I don't know if it was actually that, or even close, as that teacher had set the scene for there to have been a lot of false rumors about him and his actions. There's also a good chance I'm misremembering and or manufacturing memories of the time and of him, his actions, or behavior. One day a few years ago he crossed my mind and I decided to Google him. I had hoped that maybe he had grown up and become a successful or even semi-successful adult. I googled one or two variations of him name before I found the newspaper headline. The guy had terminated him best friend and cousin by stabbing him through the heart in a fight over a girl. Apparently he was dating the girl and she broke up with him, but he wouldn't leave her alone. And his friend cousin and their other friend had tried to stop him from assaulting her when she'd shown up and he tried to accost her. And the kid, now adult, flew into a rage and stabbed both of them and terminated his best friend, who was also his cousin, and wounded the other friend. The girl remained unharmed. Dude had stabbed the best friend eight times, with the fatal blow being through the heart, and the other guy three or four times as he ran away. The judge who presided over his criminal trial and over his requests for an appeal described it as a vicious terminating. And the jury that sentenced him cited his lack of remorse as an aggravating factor. He had taken a plea deal that essentially afforded him life in prison rather than the death penalty. He was said to have been on copious amounts of sweets at the time of the stabbing. A very sad story, and an unfortunate end for the guy who freaked my third grade teacher out so much, and even more so for his so-called best friend. Story 7. I am a teacher who teach adults who for some reason needs to redo some parts of high school. I can tell you so many broken souls that have been put down by teachers when they were younger. They were told they could never do good in school, they shouldn't even bother trying, and they will never get their dream jobs. Wow, such a way to ruin people. And the absolute majority of them can definitely succeed in school with the right help. It's an absolute wonder to see someone regain their self-esteem and to help them see that they are fully capable. A lot of my former students have gone on to finally have their dream jobs. Oh, there are so many teachers who teach kids and young adults that I would just like to tell to shut up about their students' future prospects and do your job and teach them the way they learn something. Story 8. When I asked a question in class, one of my microbiology profs got so offended that he said to the lecture hall of 500-plus students that he hoped nobody would be misguided as me and that I would not get anywhere in life, and especially never into medicine preemed class. He went on for at least a minute about how awful I was to the whole class, which shocked the class. Dead silence after he returned to lecturing. For the record, it was just a question about something he taught that conflicted with some other things he taught. And I wasn't trying to be rude, I just didn't get it. I had also never asked any questions before, or interacted with him in person before this incident. I got into medicine. I got married to a wonderful husband. His best friend, a lady, is married to the said prof's son. I met the prof at his son's wedding as my husband's plus one. Somehow the topic of me must have taken one of his classes came up. Of course, he didn't remember me at all, and I wasn't ever going to bring up him yelling at me in class. At that point in life, I would be considered very successful, even for a doctor. He turned and told his son that obviously he knew that all of his students would turn out great. It was a very awkward wedding reception for me. I did tell my husband and told him to keep it to himself. I am still amused. Story 9 she was also my niece by marriage, and she got her mother murdered a couple of years ago. I tried for years to show her that there were better options, that she could be more. In middle school, she told me she wanted to spend as much time locked up in the juvenile center as possible and be a crack worker when she grew up. She's a meth head with a violent for a boyfriend. Thinks she lives in a falling apart mobile home. Only time I've seen her since the murder, she was wandering the streets angry that everyone in the family refused to help her. Before her, I thought every child could be helped. Between her and a few other kids I've known since, I'm not so sure anymore. Story 10. My mom and I went on a walk, and she was lamenting about how bad of a mom she was raising us as kids. Back history. 
She and my dad divorced when I was three, 1966. She raised three kids on a secretary salary. My dad left the state to avoid paying child support, and she didn't have a great relationship with her parents who lived far from us. So on this walk, I'm listening to how bad she feels, and I had to stop her saying she raised three successful kids. We were all three happily married. All of us were employed. None of us have ever asked her for money. We all owned our own homes. We didn't have substance abuse issues and were never in jail. I turned to her after saying this and said, I think you raised three successful adults and did a fantastic job of it. She never saw this side of it, and I think it made her feel better. Story 11. I have a couple of examples. To be clear, I have never told a student they won't accomplish anything, but I do give them pep talks when they really don't give a cow about stuff. It's more of a don't throw away your opportunities and your talent. Care for something and work hard type of thing. I had a couple of brothers who really didn't put an effort in school. The family was well off, so they didn't give a cow. Both were very smart, but didn't give a cow. Older one was about to leave for a very good HS, but couldn't care to really do the work. Once, when he really failed my class, I was mad because he was also unruly, and I told him that he had so much potential that it pained me that he threw it all away. He got mad, told me not to speak to him ever again. I apologized the next day and we made peace. To add context, we had already talked to the parents and asked for them to be taken for an evaluation to better serve them, but the parents never did. They had a lot of money, but they weren't very good parents. They often forgot about picking up the kids. Anyways, he graduated and we were in good terms. We got sporadic updates and we found out that the dude nor his brother finished HS. The younger one almost terminated his GF in a car crash because he was underage driving and with no license. None of them are doing anything with their lives, and their parents are not that well off now because that little stunt the younger pulled off set them back a lot. Totaled car. Insurance didn't pay because he was underage. They had to pay for all the medical bills of the GF and him. Don't remember well, but I think the GF got scalped in the incident. She didn't pass away, but you can imagine. I always wonder if he remembers we talked and I was trying to make him be a better student. Bumped into him last year, and he greeted me very warmly. I hope he gets his act together. Another one recently. He's a great kid with obvious ADHD, so he is a mess at school, but he is so good and nice. The problem is his family. They're in a shady business, and one of his brothers got terminated. His friends know about his family's shenanigans, so some of them don't go to his house. We know that as soon as he graduates, he will get into the business. No one has said it to him, but we have talked about how afraid we are when he leaves. We are afraid we will hear the news of his passing. It's a shame because he is such a great kid, but we know the pull of his environment is too big. Story 12. A professor I had in college 20-ish years ago was from a small town in West Virginia. He said that in this town you have little options. You either joined the military, went to jail, worked a cow job, or were one of the three kids who went to college. The Army would land a helicopter on kids' yards, fly them around town, and sign them upon landing. He had several teachers tell him he'd never amount to anything, and only one who told him to get his cow together. He took an IQ test, and it CSME back that he was intellectually challenged. But he noticed that on this version of the test, some questions were just, do you know this word in French? So he studied French, took it again, and was a genius. They thought he cheated, so they made him take it a third time with the principal watching. He scored even higher. He said that one teacher told him he wouldn't amount to anything. He's made a copy of each of his degrees and sent it back to her writing ha-ha-ha on each one. Story 13. I think I was one of the of hated students from my school. In sixth grade, I went through the most horrific phase of my life. I was self-harming and wasn't really doing well in my academics. I was severely depressed and had to go to therapy to function normally. So, my teachers were one the reason I almost never wanted to go back to that place. They kept spreading stories of my self-harm and kept workers shamming a 12-year-old who was sexually assaulted. During 7, 8, 9, I felt extremely alone and didn't have many friends. None the teachers thought I could ever do well in my life. They called me a problematic child, attention seeker, and numerous other names to make things worse. They had absolutely no faith in me. If it wasn't for this one English teacher, I was seriously considering switching schools. She helped me with my self-esteem and shared her own experiences with me. She motivated me to go into public speaking, debates, myuns, IDK if I should name her, but she is one hell of a gem. She was probably the only one who supported my decision to shift to Delhi for my 11th, 12th, whereas all the other teachers would pounce on me and guilt trip me into staying there. When I reached 10th, I just wanted her and my mom to feel proud of me. I put my heart and soul into my academics. 
and secured 95.4% in my 10th boards and also a seat in one of India's premier schools with a merit scholarship. Recently, I scored 96.75% with all India highest in economics and political science in my 12th boards. And guess what? I went back to my old school and it was oddly satisfying to prove those teachers wrong who gave up on me when I needed them. It was the sweetest revenge possible for me. Story 14. At GCSE UK, I was told made to feel like this a lot by many a teacher family. Had to have many a counseling session at school with my mom about why my grades were so low, etc., etc. Results day came and lo behold, I'd done pretty flipping terribly, but just well enough to get into college if I retook the basics, maths, English science, GCSEs at college. Did that and again did terribly. After that, I kind of gave up. Started a minimum wage nine. Five jabo at a supermarket, to be honest. Had fun with my life. After a two, three years, a guy at work asked me why I didn't have plans to go to university. That I was clearly intelligent, etc., etc. At that point, I thought, fudge it, and went back to college. Discovered that BTX were a thing. Did that instead and discovered that it was my way of learning. Got the highest grades marks possibly for the BTEC level. Got into uni. Had a blast for four years. Met my now wife. Got disagonized as dyspraxic, got a two, one now have a very well-paid job. Story 15. I once had a teacher who hated me. Not sure why. Can only think it was because it was a private school and we weren't anywhere near as wealthy as the other families. She was the only teacher I had throughout my school life who consistently found ways to give me bad marks, reasons to give punishments, and would tell me I would never amount to anything. I distinctly remember her making me stand at the front of the class to apologize for being a selfish individual at Christmas for not doing cards when I had written one to every pupil and her. I was seven. Move on to now. I enjoy my career. It doesn't make a lot of money, but it is something I enjoy doing, and I'm able to do freelance writing in my spare time, which was always a life dream. I own my own house, I have a wonderful husband, and we are expecting our first child. So I consider myself to be winning in life. Screw you, Mrs. Grevitt, you miserable, unpleasant person. Story 16. I was the student. I had a real problem in middle and high school after my dad passed away of cancer just two weeks before my 13th birthday and struggled with apathy and depression on top of what was later diagnosed to be an autism spectrum disorder and ADHD. I had a teacher once tell me I didn't have the work ethic to accomplish anything in life because I couldn't bring myself to do anything I didn't like and so I'd be unemployed and on welfare. Almost 20 years later, after the help of some incredibly supportive college professors and a good therapist, I'm working on my doctorate in a field I've always been passionate about. I became my master's program's first endowed graduate assistant due to my almost obsessive work ethic. I've published two scholarly peer review articles, traveled and presented my original research at three professional conferences, and befriended big names in my field that I grew up venerating. I've written a book that sold more than a thousand copies and is about to be released in paperback later this year, meaning the publisher expects to keep selling more. My book was a finalist for several distinguished awards in my field. I'm working on my second book alongside my dissertation. I served on the screening committee of an Oscars-eligible film festival helping to choose the films that the festival would show in competition. I'm teaching classes. I testified before the state legislature in opposition to bills targeting LGBTQIA plus children. I'm helping to organize a union of doctoral students on my campus. I've been a talking head on a regional Emmy-nominated documentary series. I've given a half a dozen podcast interviews and a couple of dozen paid public lectures. But the sweetest of all for me was being invited to be my hometown community's keynote speaker for the Memorial Day ceremony at the cemetery last year, and seeing that teacher be forced to introduce me and list those accomplishments. Story 17. For one, I've never ever told the student I thought they wouldn't get anywhere. I have always hoped that all my kids would do well. However, I had a very problematic student who was disruptive, rude, didn't do much in class, and honestly harmed the other students with how much attention he sucked away from his teachers me included. I invested a lot of time into him, and he did improve, but he wasn't my only student, and I really hate when kids that show up to class and do what is expected of them get ignored just because they're not causing a scene every day. I could feel myself not giving enough attention to the rest of the class, so I tried to scaffold away some of my hand-holding of the problematic student. He seemed to do okay with this, and I was hopeful he'd end up okay. He's in prison for murder now. Story 18. 
I never said anything like that to a student nor a parent. I'm not a prophet, and I know academic achievement doesn't always equal with a good life. The only time I tried to temper some parents' aspiration for their child was when I was a special ed teacher. The child had Down syndrome. He was nonverbal and had difficulties tempering his emotional responses. His parents wanted him to go to middle school in a special ed class. I knew this school. There was little to no inclusion. The students of that class were ostracized by the others, and I knew that my sweet S would have a hard time adjusting. It damaged my relationship with the parents beyond repair. They wanted so much their child to have a normal life. Several years later, I saw S at a library. He was with a bunch of young adults from a special home. I don't know the name in English. I suppose the time in middle school didn't get so well. In insight, I should have tried to help them with their project instead of saying S couldn't do it. The result would have been the same, but it wouldn't have caused them pain, and perhaps would I have been able to prepare them. Story 19. Probably one for Ripley's, but I used to teach incarcerated youth, so the relationship already begins where you hope they are at their lowest point, and statistically, you are probably wrong in that hope. I truly enjoyed working with those students and have more success stories than not. I still believe all students can improve despite their circumstances. Anyhow, one particular student never did anything he was asked to do. He'd make fun of other students who listened. He'd constantly be standing and walking around the classroom. He'd tag the walls and desks. We'd send him to psych, social, legal, nurse. Whenever we could, but any time that he was in the classroom, it was a harder period. The average seat time for pre-adjudicated students when I was there was 17 days and post-adjudication maybe two months. I don't recall how long I had this particular student, but I recall getting more serious with him than I would with most students. I had a short stint as a public defender and could paint a pretty vivid picture of potential futures for these young men and women. I spoke somewhat harshly to him about what lay in store if he didn't invest more in himself. A year or less after I had this student, I was getting off at a subway station that had delayed service due to someone falling on the tracks. I smelled burning human and thought, ooh, terrible way to go. A day or so later, a colleague sent a text message and asked if I had heard about what happened to our troublesome student. No, what? He passed away. Ah! How? He ripped off a kiosk and was running from police and tried to cross the tracks and hit the third rail. Terminated him instantly. Ah, uh, yeah, it was near where you live, so I figured you may have already heard. Thanks for letting me know. I checked the news and my text messages. Yep. My troublesome student was the electrocuted body I smelled. Sad case all around. Story 20. Had a teacher that recommended I be in remedial classes, in spite of getting a B average, telling me I would fail in advanced classes in high school. Took advanced classes anyways, and I'm glad I did because they challenged me. Turns out I didn't do amazing in her class because I wasn't, wait for it, challenged. Changed high schools my senior year, and classes were a joke compared to my previous high school, so I coasted and started an entry-level government job right out of high school, and have been a federal employee ever since moving up every few years. I'm not wealthy, but I am comfortable, and I will be retired ten years younger than when that unpleasant was when she made her comments to me. Thanks for the motivation, bad person. Story 21. I had a math teacher in middle school say that everyone in the class was terrible at math, and that if none of us failed the final exams, standardized test, he would personally pick us all up from our houses and drive us to the amusement park. In my defense, I failed the asterisk writing asterisk section of the test, which is ironic given that writing is my favorite and math is the bane of my existence. Anyway, I just got accepted into a game design major, even though he all but explicitly stated that he believed none of us would ever do anything with our lives. I think he might have said that to some of the other students, but I was clever enough to be quiet when I was stuck in class. Then go home and ask my mom for help. He was a pretty nasty guy, though. My mom was part of the PTA for a few years, and he was always that same level of demeaning towards the parents, even. I'm amazed he never got fired. Story 22. Not a teacher, but a student. Something was off about the school I went to. All the burnout students were just poor and didn't have time to do homework. And now they're all business owners. Mostly blue-collar work, but making bank nonetheless. The incredibly smart-slash-popular kids all own homes now, but are working soulless jobs and cannot maintain a healthy relationship. The popular chicks mostly do censored photos and only fans. Theater kids have gone on to make music, some successfully or even are in plays to this day. The jocks are still jocking and are either playing professionally or coaching and or personal training. Hardly any of these folks have gone to jail other than a few DUIs. However, there is a group of people who absolutely blew my mind. 
There have been a larger population of my old school of the students who got good grades but weren't too active in any part of a particular group that have been involved with CP, or stuff of the related, and or currently serving time. What made it weird was these kids got good grades and usually were the more wealthy students. It sounds like something someone crazy on schizophrenic Instagram, TikTok, would talk about, but it's been in my local news lately. It's kind of freaking me out, frankly. Some of the teachers have been commenting on the local Facebook page for the town saying things like, I always knew he'd turn out like that for one particular guy. And it spooked me because there were no telling signs other than the fact that he was just different. He got good grades, showed up to class every day, was smart, knew how to talk to people, etc., but no one wanted to be his friend. No one had a good reason why either. It was just an air. Story 23. The last school I went to was for all the kid who were in care in the area I lived. All of the kids in the class except for me went to prison for one thing or another. The lowest crime I know of was a guy who simply did sweets. I keep tabs on him because he was a genuinely nice guy, and one I day, he may be okay. The highest crime I know of was done by someone I used to sit next to every day he assaulted and murdered a little kid, not sure of the age. He is surprisingly not in prison now, and has gone on to have eight children, seven girls, and one boy. I keep tabs on him for the obviously reason, and I know he will do something again. I was informed many time I would be like all these guys I went to school with. I'm proud to say I have never been to prison, and the last time I was arrested was when I was 14 for assault, self-defense. I have a stable career and three children, and soon I will be a granddad. Also, it helped to move out of the area I'm from originally. Story 24. Not a teacher, but feel this should be said. In third grade, I had a teacher that despised me. I have no idea why. I wasn't poorly behaved or anything. One day at the end of the day, me and another kid were the last two in the room. She told the other boy he needed to start working harder and pay more attention in class, or he would grow up to be a loser like Texa 13, me, right in front of me. Then one day in sixth grade, she changed grades so I had her again. I was standing in the lunch line and a kid pushed me, joking around. I pushed back, also joking around. She tried to have just me expelled for it. Then she moved grades again. I'm ninth grade, my GF was in her class. Somehow the teacher found out we were dating and told her to stay away from me because I was the type that would get her pregnant and leave her. I never did anything to this woman. She destroyed my self-confidence through the entirety of my school years. And now I'm not a deadbeat dad, I love my kid. While I didn't go to college, I make a decent living and have been married to the same woman for 20 plus years. I didn't turn out the way she thought and I bet plenty don't. But a teacher's attitude towards their students can have a profound effect on them. Story 25. I'm not a teacher, but my primary school's principal told my parents to not expect much from me on the academic side when I was about seven or eight years old. I had a lot of issues as a kid, such as undiagnosed ADHD, suspicions of having Tourette syndrome, which only turned out to be ADHD, and I had learning disability that came mostly with my then undiagnosed ADHD. So from that principal's perspective, I wouldn't be able to go far in studies? Well, after many specialists and ADHD medications, after many years of struggling with finding the right way for me to study, and after Amy years of redirecting my college studies, I finally graduated from university as a Bachelor of Animation specializing in 3D art. Overall, I did three years of study in graphic design, two years of general studies to get my GPA up to acceptance level for university, three years of visual art studies to get a decent enough art portfolio, then a three-year study in university. Story 26. Taught an eighth-grade student who was labeled odd, oppositional defiance disorder. It's essentially a catch-all for very dangerous, very disrespectful, very violent students. In eight years, I only encountered one. Admin used his diagnosis to let him get away with everything. He would grope girls. He would mime masturbating in class. He would cuss everyone out constantly. He would drop his pants and pretend to pour out the water on someone. He never got punished because of his disorder. Mom backed him up every time and was his hash one supporter. In high school, he starts beating on his mom. All of a sudden, she's not in his corner anymore. She kicks him out and he ended up in jail. I always wonder, if anyone ever held him accountable, would he have had a shot? Story 27. When we were little, my brother's kindergarten teacher told my mom that my brother would never amount to anything and that he needed to be in special ed because he was too dumb for regular classes. This was early 90s and the lady was old, so not shocked she said that to my mom's face. My brother kind of struggled through school because he would barely do the work.
Turns out as an adult, he was bored AF the whole time, and he had ASD and was never diagnosed. Now he's got his master's in psychology and is planning to continue on to a PhD. He currently works for MHMR, helping kids and people in need to get the mental health services they need. Story 28. I worked at an extremely low SES school right out of college. I had so many great students, but there were a handful of kids I simply couldn't reach. One sixth grader was notorious on our campus. He was in my class, incredibly bright, and we had a decent relationship. I could tell this kid stood no chance, told me him and his dad would trash hotel rooms and other property for fun. Every other word out of his mouth was fudge or the N-word. He never lashed out at me, but I would see referrals come through where he'd throw desks, threaten to hit teachers, etc. He was in and out of the alternative campus constantly. The summer after his eighth grade year, he passed away. Circumstances were not released other than it was some sort of incident. Sadly, a few years later, I had another student who I could tell was a mess outside of the band hall, but he loved saxophone and took a lot of pride in his musicianship. He got murdered in an incident at his apartment when he was 15 or 16. Wouldn't be surprised if he ended up joining a gang after MS. I didn't see that one coming. That one was really heavy. Rest easy, DeMarcus and Juan. Story 29. I was correct. He was in my class as a seventh grader, though he only showed up a handful of times. He was shot dead running with gangbangers at 2 a.m. on a school night when he was 15. They covered the shooting on the local news. They interviewed several friends who all said how he was the smartest and kindest person they knew. I wish they'd have interviewed me. He couldn't read. He didn't know basic math. He threw a desk at me and beat up another teacher. The poor mom, the one who let her son skip school 90% of the time, the one who never returned a phone call from the school and never showed up when her son was in trouble, and the one who let her son run around at 2 a.m. on a school night. She was screaming about how unfair the world was taking away her angel. Story 30. I'm not a teacher, but I didn't end up where my chemistry teacher said I would. She said I was stupid and that I'll never make it in life and be a failure until I pass away. Well, I got into university, graduated, got a job as a car salesman, and got promoted to dealership manager. Bought a second Mercedes, and right now I'm working on getting my IT certifications because I want to find a job where I can work from home. I'm also working on starting a small business with my best friend. She wasn't right about me. Not knowing every acid and how it reacts with random cow does not make you a failure. Story 31. Oh, this is a juicy one. So there was this teacher in high school, Mr. Thompson. He was super strict and always seemed to have it out for certain kids, you know. There was this one guy, Jake, who Mr. Thompson always said wouldn't amount to anything. Jake was always in trouble, barely passed his classes, and everyone kind of thought he'd just fade into the background. Fast forward about 10 years and guess what? Jake is now running his own successful tech startup. Like he's doing really well, making more money than I can even imagine. It's kind of crazy how life turns out sometimes. I heard Mr. Thompson retired a few years back, and I can't help but wonder if he ever thinks about how wrong he was about some of his students. Makes you realize how important it is not to judge people too quickly, because you never really know where they'll end up. What about you? Ever seen someone prove everyone wrong? Story 32. I had a student who wanted to become a PE teacher. During a PT conference, I mentioned to the mom that I thought he should change his behavior around women, or it wouldn't be the correct career for him. The mom raged out, got the principal involved, threatened a lawsuit, contacted the board. His brother also wanted to be a PE teacher, but I didn't comment, although I knew it would not go well. First kid became a PE teacher, committed a close relationship crime to a number of his female students, and is not on the registry. The second was in university and ran afoul of the local vigilantes against child predators. Story 33. Always love telling this one. Not my story, but my brother's. My brother was not a great student, not a bad person, just hated school, always misbehaved, was in detention regularly and got terrible grades. One particular teacher who detested him told him verbatim, you are never going anywhere in life. Since school, he has been incredibly successful, and many years later the school invited him to speak. The teacher who said that to him still worked at the school years later. After parting some words for his success, he finished on, and never let anyone tell you that you're not good enough or can't go anywhere. Ms. XX over there told me that when I was your age, but look where I have got to today. She came up to him after speaking and said, X, that was not necessary, he replied. No, Ms. X, what you said to me was not necessary. Story 34. Not a teacher, but I was homeschooled until seventh grade, 
so I didn't have any friends when I started going to public school and was also really shy. This one popular kid was also kind of the class clown and appeared to be involved in some type of gang activity. We were in a large inner city school district. We had a couple classes together, and he was the first person to go out of their way and talk to me, call me his friend, and introduce me to other kids. I tried out for the track team because of him that year, and we were team captains together the following year. I remember waiting for a bus with him after practice, and he opened up to me about his family life and how he couldn't wait until high school next year because he'd be old enough to get a job and go live with his uncle. Plus, that would mean we would be at the same school again. One day we were in our social studies class and he was being particularly disruptive. Our teacher got fed up and essentially told him that if he keeps going down the path he's on, he's going to end up dropping out of school, in jail, or worse. That summer leading up to our freshman year of high school, he was shot and terminated by one of our classmates. That was about 20 years ago, but I still think about him from time to time. His friendship meant a lot. Story 35. I can tell two stories from a parent's point of view. Asterisk. At my son's year 10 teacher interviews, I suggested to the English teacher that my son was far more capable than the C grade he was getting and that she should push him more. She said she just didn't see it and not to expect better. My son now has a master's degree and works for an international company writing complex policy and analysis documents. Asterisk. A work colleague and friend has a son of a similar age. Teachers recommended in year nine that he have additional tutoring to try and get him through high school and try and aim for a trade or office job eventually. His son is now a university lecturer in science. Boys can be very late developers academically. Story 36. Not a teacher, but I had a great teacher in high school who taught English and approached this with our whole class. He was about to pass back a paper we had written, and he paused and said, I don't want any of you to be discouraged by your grades. Not just in my class, but in any class. Some people are meant to live a good life digging ditches and having friends and family around them who love and support them. Others are meant to be successful lawyers who marry beautiful spouses and have kids they never see until they retire and have to blow their money on buying love and status. Live the life you want, not the life your grades say you can have. Apparently, there were a lot of ditch diggers in my class, LOL. Story 37. My childhood bully accidentally terminated himself a few years ago. He was what you would call a troubled kid. I'm not sure of the specifics, but he was in foster care and there was a rumor that his birth mother was drunk during most of the pregnancy. He was aggressive and lied about everything to make himself look better. Even though the lies were so absurd, no one believed them. He bullied other people as well, but I was by far his biggest enemy. The bullying was mostly physical and belittling the first years. But during secondary school, it was only mean comments, messages online, and talking bad about me behind my back. After he graduated, the bullying stopped, and he became friends with a lot of my friends. They liked him, and he seemed to have changed, but I didn't really believe it. One day, I walked past his workplace, and there were lots of police there. I figured he'd been caught dealing sweets, which I knew he did, and went on with my day. Later that evening, me and my friends were hanging out, and my friend's dad came and told us my bully had terminated himself earlier that day. We were one of the first people to know, and I was the only one in the room that didn't cry. We later learned that he had accidentally hung himself while filming a TikTok prank, and that dying wasn't his intention. Story 38. Elementary teacher here. I had two students end up in prison. One in kindergarten and one from second grade. They both came from abusive homes and struggled to learn how to read. The kindergartner murdered an elderly woman while trying to steal money for sweets. The second grader was in special education classes and could not read. He had a violent temper. He ended up in a gang and terminated a man. Now this was in the 80s, so no hope of assistance was available. I tried my best to comfort and give these two young boys a safe place during the day. They never had a chance. Teachers dreaded having them in their classroom. A lost generation due to neglect and generational poverty. Story 39. I had a student about 10 years ago who bought into the social media entrepreneurship fad. I don't mean start a business. I mean the passive income. Get rich, retire at 30. Nonsense. She bought several mansions on borrowed money. No idea how she got the loan. Maybe her parents. With the idea to rent them out nightly for Gatsby-esque parties. Her social media looked killer. Her website looked killer. And her life looked killer. How did she do it? She would charge $5 K20KA night, depending on the mansion and day of the week. Last I heard, she got bad Botox, was divorced at 25, bankrupt, and I haven't heard anything from her since. Story 40. This is more on the student POV. I was a candy dealer in high school. 
At the beginning of sophomore year, the faculty had called the parents of all of my friends and acquaintances and told them to never let them near me because I was just no good and only going to end up in prison. They were right. Shortly after I had gotten into a verbal altercation with a student, they searched my car and found two, three grams of candy, and arrested me. I spent six months of the year in alternative school. Then a month of in-school suspension, I felt isolated and continued to explore, sell different suites. Growing customer base of 300 people for the next few years, I ended being mainly addicted to candy from the age of 17 to 21 when I was sentenced to several felony candy charges and six years in prison where I was able to rediscover myself, battle my insecurities, and grow into a man. I understand the injustice I provided to the community and the families within. Today, at 26 and sober, I am about to complete my parole this upcoming October. I have a three-month-old son, a fiancé, a cat and dog named Tim and Cora. I have my own home renovation company and one rental property. I'm averaging about 50k a year, which isn't the most, but I am happy and content. Story 41. I had a middle school teacher who hated me and tried her damnedest to get me put in a special class. Yes. I have ADD and come from an abusive family, but I was never a bad kid. Is any kid bad? Fast forward, and I graduated high school, went to college, and worked at the same time. I have been a woodworker for over 20 years. I've played, written for, and sang in four music bands. I am a very exceptional gardener and cook. I am a professional dancer in tap and ballet. I have backpacked a thousand miles in the wilderness. I'm an expert trout fisherman. I'm an amateur car mechanic. I'll never forget. At one of my first open mics when I was young, that very same teacher was in the audience and drunk. After my two songs, she came up and pronounced that she was my teacher and gave me a big hug, like she wanted the whole room to know. I visibly recoiled and it made me want to puke. Fudge you, Miss Briggs. Story 42. As a retired teacher, I never had a student I thought would go nowhere. I thought some of them would have a hard time if they didn't change the lazy ways they seemed to revel in. But I did think it would be hard for them if they didn't grow up but I am sure most of them did. One super irritating one that I did have, whose parents weren't much better, did call me 15 years later to tell me that he was successful and had lots of money. I lived rent-free in his head for 15 years, and he had to call and tell me how horrible I was and how he is so much better because he makes lots more money than I will ever have made. Doesn't sound like he's changed much. Glad he's not on the streets, but I wouldn't want him as my next-door neighbor. Story 43 my best friend and I were real pieces of work in HS. We got into significant legal trouble that resulted in both of us being expelled from the school district. We were told by every teacher that if we didn't shape up, we'd either be dead or in state by 21. Best friend who is still my best friend is now a father of three and best dad I know. He is 10 years away from enjoying his pension on some beach. I ended up lost for a few years, enrolled in community college after watching other friends get locked up for life, enrolled at a CC, transferred to a no-name state school, graduated and worked my way into a consulting role at a Big Four, MBA from an M7, Adcom love my bootstrap story, and now a CTO for a big firm. Ran into one of my old teachers who became the principal for the HS I was kicked out of, and he asked me to come back and speak. Didn't turn out too bad, but there was a lot of close calls over the years. Story 44. So sad to see so many stories of teachers belittling students, especially those with issues or struggle learning. It seems in most instances posted that child has long since grown up so they were taught by the silent gen or boomers. Makes me wonder if Gen X and millennial teachers are more inclusive and less pull up those bootstraps mentality. With all the modern knowledge about mental health, modern medicine, diagnosing ADHD early, and just people trying to be better humans, I just wonder... And don't misconstrue this as some generational attack. Just honestly curious if things have changed at all.